Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Hope you're well on this Thursday. <laughs> Thursday evening. Damn that button. It's a good case, but it's a painful <laughs> to get the volume. One day I'll get a new iPad. All good. I um, hope you're well. I had a good night. You would have probably seen if you uh, have got the bell hit on and subscribed on the channel. If you're on the podcast, you wouldn't have possibly seen. If you haven't tried our YouTube channel, come over and see us there. A uh, new video dropped. It was my review of the Panasonic. Where are you? Panasonic FT7, me uh, little backup camera I run around with. Uh, it's got a little peak design clip on there. So I run around with that. Goes on my backup tripod. Uh, when it's pouring with rain, I can just whack that out in the rain and just, and just film and just get B roll or capture what I'm doing and I don't have to worry about it. Um, you'll see on the video, I've, I think it was a sort of good review. Basically, I just went full vlog with this and nothing else no no mic well the, you can't put a microphone in it but i just run with that on the on the bmx went for a ride filmed did all that you can see how bumpy and the stabilization and all that sort of stuff go check out the video you'll get the whole gist of it anyway so that was pretty cool that's up and live so i'm pretty happy um yeah, the best part of that from my perspective and I know I've probably said it a thousand times, my poor little MacBook Pro, which isn't with us anymore. We've got my beautiful, lovely new 16 inch, which the next video is, the unboxing for that. That'll be out, oh, I've got to start on that tonight, so we'll be talking a bit more about that as we come up to it. But uh, it was my first edit with that. So yeah, awesome, bloody amazing and I think the last video, which was the Mundaring Dam video with the Astro, the Milky Way, which was really cool, that was um, crashed twice, so it ended up taking like six hour, half hours to render, nearly seven hours, um, and this was, and that was like a 20 minute video. This last video, the Panasonic review, was a 16 minute video, it took me 14 minutes to render. Mine friggin blown I have to tell you <laughs> uh, two years of running this channel what are we up to 294 another day another vlog episodes another probably hundred odd hundred plus videos on top of that my zero sleep in those two years constant frustration sitting there waiting for Lightroom to edit the photo, to change the colour, to do all that. This thing is friggin' amazing. Uh, it's probably the best investment I've had. I waited seven, I had seven years, I got out of my old laptop. It still works fine, as I said before. It works amazing on everything still, <laughs> even after seven years, or six years, sorry. Six and a half now. Um, except for the video editing and the photos. You just can't handle because it just doesn't have the graphics in there. Uh, with this, it's got the 5500M in there, and it's got 64 gig of RAM, so as big as I could go, until they put that other one out the other day, um, <laughs> the mongrels, um, but just just mind-boggling. Just, just makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and yeah, like, I can now, I used to run on quarter, now I run on full, full version and I can chop and change and do everything. It's just, yeah, it's just, the stress load goes off your shoulders when you can sit there and you just go bang, 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 and everything just does it. And you can chop and change it, press play, it'll play and pause, uh, render stuff, render your photos as you go on. And it's just, oh, it's just, yeah, very, very cool. I got more achieved yesterday afternoon. That would normally take me, would have taken me last night and tonight and then to up load it tonight just to get that video finished so it was just a yeah, very very happy lad in that regards and I think that put a positive spin on today because I had a good day today, it was a really funny day, one of those days of work where I didn't do anything wrong, I don't, or I hope I didn't fingers crossed, knock on wood 
but everyone else was just in circus land. It was yeah, it was pretty darn funny. One of those funny days, and yeah, it was. I I laughed multiple times today. <laughs> but I can't say any more because people will know <laughs> it was too funny. But anyway, um, I do want to do a big shout out to uh, one of my best mates, Dicko. Happy birthday, buddy. Uh, yeah, I was sort of hoping we were going to swing through once we sold the house to come through Adelaide and would have normally caught up. Always love catching up for a beer for his birthday. Um, happy birthday to Dicko. Hope you had a good lunch with Beck. And yeah, I'll, obviously I'll give you another buzz next week or when I'm home again. We can have a proper chat and a chin wag. But uh, yeah. For all these people out there, and that's the worst thing about this COVID is, I guess, birthdays and, and celebrations and people having babies and all that sort of stuff. You can't go and celebrate with your mates and your friends and, like, you look forward to, I guess, as you get older, it's sort of, the birthdays are good to catch up with your best mates and all that, and you go out and have a beer with the boys and just chill out, talk crap and relive your form of glory when you were young and all the stuff we us, all us old bastards do so yeah it sort of makes it a little bit harder I mean especially I mean I know I live in another state and most of my good mates are spread across Australia which is a monster country so it's hard to catch up with everyone and you probably see them maybe once every two years now or once a, try to get to once every year but it can be tricky um, but yeah so it's sort of hard to not be able to catch up with them and have that cold beer and you know shoot the shit and all the normal stuff us Aussie blokes do. But uh, yeah, happy birthday, brother, and I hope you had a good one. Right, now on with what I was going to talk about, because I did forget to take your book to, work, to write my notes down. Okay, um, big thing I guess today was the Panasonic Lumix G100 release. Uh, the vloggers camera that Panasonic just released I think two days ago, whew, got smashed in the reviews. Uh, there was a couple of reviews which I don't even think they actually tested the camera. They just basically run through the specs and did a baseline review. The footage I seen was absolutely terrible. It um, and I think uh, I went over and the, the best, the funniest guy to watch, and uh, actually a very honest review is Camera Conspiracies. And he's a Panasonic user, and he slayed it. It was, uh, it was pretty woeful. The DPR DP review had it. They they did a good review on it, but they didn't really smash it. I'm assuming they had it under some sort of agreement with it or whatever. But you could see the video they were using, and he was walking along, and it was just shaking. It was just unusable footage. You'd have to. I don't think even if you put it in the stabilization in Prem Pro it would have come anywhere near fixing how bad that looked. Uh, the lens on it, the one that comes with it, which was a 12 to 32, uh, at 4K, crops in, so it's really bad. It's like a 16 and really no much room. Um, it did have some good sound stuff for it. it had front, it's got a front, rear, and side uh, mics, so it can do a few things and just block do do the front it can do sound tracking so when it tracks your head like with your focus it can also do that so when you're talking and do all that sort of funny stuff as well so they did spend some time on the sound now they didn't have any high wind noise tests on the video on the reviews i did so it's hard to tell if those microphones can handle actual wind noise and background noise because there's no real way to put like a earmuff like on your on your road here where you've got the dead cat. There's just doesn't work. Um, and I mean that's about you just need something like that. It's the only way you can really stop that wind when you're outside. So the sound was good. The video side was pretty average. Um, it will do. It did have some fun things in it. Um, it's saying it's got a five axis stabilization, but that's digital. They've got rid of in body stabilization, which is nuts. Panasonic is known for its quality stabilization. The G85 and the G9 are really, really good in that regards. It's what it's what makes them like really good cameras. 
They've also got 10 bit. This is only 8 bit color. So you can't get that same color grade. You're not going to get anywhere near the same color that you used to if you had a G85, which is probably going to be cheaper than buying this. You could buy one of them second hand before you buy one of these new and get a better camera out of it. Uh, yeah, really bad in that regards. Uh, the, I talked about the crop. Uh, some good things. It did have a, uh, a vertical vertical mode so when you turn to vertical basically rotate the image so it, it can pick up that you are in vertical so if you're doing stuff for Instagram or TikTok and stuff like that it will basically have a preset thing and crop it for you so you get the right aspect ratio in regards to that it also on the aspect ratios it will show you like a green border or I think a green or a blue border so you can go through the different borders and then on your screen it will show you what's going to be when you're looking at your flippy screen will then show you what's going to be in shot, which I think that was good. So it did have some good, it did have some positives. Uh, it did have a USB port you can charge from, so you can basically plug in and charge it while it's running. But battery power was pretty average, so unless you're going to strap a battery pack onto the back of it somehow and Velcro that on so you can vlog for a long time, uh, no good. 4K mode was recording 10 minutes. That's all you can record for 10 minutes, which is what the, yeah, that's insane. Even like M50s, 30 minutes. Uh, that's, yeah, wow. I, I thought that was crazy. Autofocus was terrible. Uh, both on DP review and, oh, who else did I watch? They had it. It was hunting in, out, in, out. Uh, it's still, it's no phase detect like the Canon's. Uh, or the Sony, it is still the contrast detect and it is really, really average from what I've seen. It was no good at all. Um, and that was about it. It just, it basically got slayed by everyone. Um, I think the only one that sort of talked positive about it was Tony Northrup and I don't think he actually went out and tested. He's, he's still to do a review on it. He basically just talked about what, what it was in the box and the specs, and unfortunately, I think he's going to find, like everyone else has already found uh, on the pre-productions, that it's just not going to be anywhere near that, that new Sony, which is out. Even the Sony's probably not as good as, say, a G85. Uh, the Sony's probably a little bit better than the M50 for vlogging, if you're doing vlogging. But yeah, overall, it, it just didn't turn out real well for Panasonic, that release. Uh, I think someone in the camera conspiracies uh, messages mentioned something about did uh, Canon lend out the cripple hammer to Panasonic because they crippled it hard, really hard. So yeah, uh, pretty funny. Well, it's not funny for them, I guess. Uh, camera companies can't afford anything at the moment, and that's what brings us into the. That was a good segue actually into the next thing, Olympus. Uh, whew. When I was a kid at school and I started photography, when I used to roll my own film, in, make, put my own film into a cartridge, in the dark room, in the tanks, make all, pour all the chemicals, drain them out at the end of the day, and use the enlarger, develop our own film, all that stuff. And Olympus was like the duck's guts of cameras. It was very well respected. Well, sad day last night, or today I guess for us, pretty much yesterday for you guys, uh, Olympus announced it has, well, it's in negotiation, it has a memorandum of understanding, which is, I guess, the, the pre, prequel to basically being sold to JIP, which is a Japan Industrial Partners. Now, the funny thing I thought, I thought, you know, Olympus, it's been around for a long time, the um, imaging division, it's very well, it's a huge brand, it must have a heap of patents, a heap of technology that that they still own. JIP's asset value is only $150 million. So what did they pay for it? It sounds like they got this mega, mega cheap. Um, I think Canon or Sony could have easily absorbed it into their one of their divisions, taken the technology that and the patents that Olympus had for maybe stabilization and some colors and, and some other different tricks they had up their sleeves, weather sealing and bits like that, taking that technology, that knowledge, and then 
merged that into their gear and still kept that as a little offshoot. If a, a company or a, and it's basically just a it's a share share market company. It's just an investor's portfolio. This this JIP. Uh, it's not actually a real company. It's just basically made up of investors' money. If they can afford to pay for this thing and they've only got 150 million in in cash as as their total value. Uh, what did they pay for it? 10, 20 million? Like, surely Olympus was worth more than that, the value, that brand and all that. It could have... Uh, surely another big company, Apple. What the hell was that? This was would be a, would have been a bargain for Apple. It would have been like chump change to these guys. They've got like 500 billion or something ridiculous in cash, don't they? They could have easily bought Olympus, absorbed that technology into their phones, uh, into... I, yeah, I, I don't understand that, and I think from what it, from what I read about this JIP, it looks like they have got it super super cheap. So Olympus must have been absolutely busted, um, which is a real real shame. As I said, when I grew up, they were one of the great really great camera companies. It was Olympus was just like if you got a, if you had heaps of money, you could afford an amazing Olympus camera. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then yeah, now it's gone, or, or pretty much on the way out. I don't know how long these guys will last. I don't know if it's like its last ditch effort, or they bought it so they can sell it off and uh, split it up and sell the technology, I guess maybe, so not sure. But yeah, sad day in the photography world. Don't want to see any of them go actually, because it's good to have that competition and that variety to give everyone, because everyone's different, everyone, take different photos, different styles. It's good to have different options so you can, I guess, get your vision out to the people that want that you want to see it or the, the people that need to see it. Um, Starlink. Uh, a bit of news on that today. Uh, good old Elon is on, on a tear in, already in 2020. He's having a good year. Uh, the rockets are going really well. Well, they're about to sign up to possibly... You can sign up now to be a beta tester for the new Starlink program. So basically, they're talking end of this year. They're in North America, so it's Canada, USA, pretty much. Uh, they're looking for beta testers. So you can go over to the Starlink website, sign up, put your address, uh, postcode or area code or whatever they call it, and... Uh, your details in there and then they will pick whoever they want to pick from whatever area codes to test it you can sign up to be one of the first to use their satellite broadband broadband from the future now elon's saying that it's going to be up to one gigabyte per second with 30 millisecond uh, latency so that's pretty darn impressive uh that's better than anything you can get in australia which is just insane uh, I've got the best I can get as a, just a, a personal, I guess, account. Yeah, next step up, I have to pay like 300, 500 bucks a month just for the internet uh, to get anywhere near 300 megs. At the moment, I can best I guess like 70 to 80, and that's with fiber to the premise. So optical fiber straight into my house, and then I've got optical fiber running through the house, and it's the best I can get is maybe 80 on a good day, maybe 90 meg. Uh, so one gig is just explosion in the head. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do with that sort of internet. It'd be you go to get a cup of tea and you come back and your stuff's ready. Now, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do now? <laughs> so that is available, and also as well as that, Starlink later this year is going to be doing an IPO. So they're going to be basically selling shares to the company. So that's, I guess, for your shareholders something interesting. He hasn't had too many misses in his life, so this one I think could be a good one if you've got your sp some spare coin or. You're thinking of, and you're an investor, it might be a good thing. I think this might be good. I think they said they need about 50 billion to finish, complete it, and set it all up. Um, it's, they've got 10 billion so far. So they're doing pretty well, and I think they'll get the money. I don't think they'll have any problems raising that capital. Um, as I said, the predicted money that comes back in from that internet every year, they're talking it's a $40 billion a year. Uh, profit market so I mean once he gets going it's going to be him and then Bezos is doing it with Amazon so there's really only going to be two satellite internet players 
uh, and Bezos is a good couple of years, maybe three years behind uh, Starlink, so st and Starlink starting up at the end of this year, so they're way, way ahead of the game. So even worst case scenario, they get it done, then Amazon comes along two years later, there's $80 billion he can make before they even rock up. So I think it's, it's I think they're gonna do pretty well, he's gonna do, yet again, do really well. Now the money he's gonna make out of this is gonna be the one that feeds his Mars project and that's what it's all about. For him anyway, he don't care about the money, he just wants to get to Mars. Now, uh, lucky last, uh, there was a quick one today about iPhone 12, the charger was spotted, um, uh, prototype, and it's a 20 watt charger, so uh, I think it's a, a two watt bump on the old 18 watt charger from the last phone, the 11 plus or 11 pro or whatever 11 it was. Um, so yeah, a couple of, couple of watts extra bump, which might mean a little bit quicker um, speed to charge your phone. So what's happening, always happening here. Hopefully I can bring you everything up to date and before other people as well. Sometimes it'll feel like I get there. Sometimes not, let me know if I'm reasonably accurate or getting in before the big boys. Be nice to know I'm sort of close to the mark. Anyway, that's it from me. Have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you all again. It is Thursday, isn't it? Um, it is Thursday. <laughs> I'll see you all again for the end of the week show tomorrow, Friday. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you had a great Thursday, and I'll see you all soon. We'll be coming this way, that way. I'll catch you on Friday.